Okay, just want to remind everybody that we're being televised, and uh, I think we'll be long gone before 10 o'clock. Um, so <clears throat> first on our agenda, we have a discussion, amendments to section 638.1, 38 41, and 42 related to the economic development opportunity, and we have a special guest, our wonderful planner, Ms. Wan, so would you like to, you have the floor. Good evening. Um, I, before I begin my presentation, I um, I want to introduce you to to the assistant township planner. Uh, it's her first meeting, Lauren Damiano. She has been a great asset to the planning department. She has helped me immensely in working uh, on this ordinance. So welcome. Um, welcome. So. In 2017, uh, Old Bridge adopted its master plan re-examination report. And one of the recommendations of the master plan re-examine was to re-evaluate uh, the EDO zone and make it more flexible to read the actual recommendation. I printed it so that I can just reiterate. It says that the EDO, the land uses permitted in the EDO 1 and the EDO 3 zone should be studied to determine whether they should be expanded to create greater flexibility and diversity that would strengthen the local economy and benefit Old Bridge Township. So based on this recommendation and um, from what I have been observing in the last few months, uh, I think it was very important to evaluate the ordinance. In the past, I have got numerous calls from uh, the economic development director, the zoning officer, asking me, what do you think about this use? Because this use doesn't fit into the permitted uses section. And my answer would be that the first section itself says, if it's not listed, it's not permitted. 
But here, we're trying to be more business friendly, uh, encourage more businesses to come in uh, Old Bridge, but then our ordinance is really over restrictive when it comes to uh, the permitted users. We follow the NICS system. In the past 15 years that I've been working in this field, I haven't come across a township ordinance that follows the NICS system now. They're more uh, open to newer users because as the economy changes, the retail market changes, changes, there are newer uses that come in. So if the ordinance is very restrictive, then most of these uses have to be bounced back to the zoning order uh, to the zoning board. So as a first step, we just looked at our EDO zone ordinance. We looked at the properties in the EDO zone, and then we started evaluating as to what would work, what would not work. So uh, first slide. Just to orient all of you, um, here's our parcel data. What you see in pink is the EDO3 zone. So the EDO3 zone is mostly located along, uh, in fact, it is located along Route 9 and Route 18. Then we have in blue the EDO1 zone. If you notice, EDO1 zone is mostly along English Town Road and Route 34. There's a tiny portion of um, EDO1 on uh, five, Route 516 and then a very small portion along Route 9. So next slide. Here's the aerial showing those parcels and again uh, English Town Road, Route 34 and tiny bit of 516 has EDO1 and EDO3 is along 18 and 9. Next slide. So the current issues. Uh, as I said, the ordinance is over restrictive when it comes to permitted uses. The other thing I notice is uh, the two purposes. If you look at EDO1 zone and EDO3 zone, the purpose is identical, but that is kind of tailor-made to highway commercial or regional commercial. But EDO1 is along Route 34, English Town Road. That is really not highway commercial. It's more to do with neighborhood commercial type of uses. So the purpose itself has some flaws. Then we also notice that along Route 34, there are a lot of auto-related uses. Like every other parcel has auto-related uses. I don't have a problem with that, but the problem is the look of the entire zone in that section of Route 34. So then we have bulk standards which really don't promote pad site developments, like especially in the EDO3 zone where the parcels are larger or deeper, there is a room to allow pad sites. Our ordinance doesn't talk about it. The LTO is completely silent on drive-through facilities. One of the early applications which I was reviewing for planning board, I realized that drive-through facilities have been treated as accessory uses. So which means that if a pharmacy is allowed, the drive-through is treated as accessory use. If a bank is allowed, drive-through is allowed as an accessory use. If a restaurant is allowed, a drive through is again allowed as an accessory use. But when we're talking about town center, we're talking about main street, we really can't have so many drive through facilities. Because, and the reason being is drive through facilities need more circulation around the building. They, they don't really call for a compact design. When you have drive throughs, they'll be in and out, they'll be by bailout lanes. So, um, I wanted to address that when we did EDO. So that was one of the focus. The design standards, both EDO1 and EDO3 design standards were directed to the town center district, but EDO3 is highway commercial. It's along Route 9, Route 18. You can't really expect the design standards to be identical. I mean, to some extent, I understand EDO1 because that's been the vision for EDO1. If it's neighborhood commercial, uh, you would expect that the design standards are uh, kind of similar, but not for the EDO3 when it's along highway. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that the ordinance cross-references to the TCD town center district standards too many times. So every time you have to go back and refer to the new book. The other thing I noticed is that this ordinance that was adopted 
has conditional uses within it 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 is silent on prohibited uses but uh, it has definitions uh, like uh, embedded in that ordinance whereas everywhere else there is a definition section so there is section 6 250-6 which has all definitions you have section 250-41 which has all conditional uses except for the conditional uses in the edo1 and edo3 zone so for somebody like me or the zoning officer who reviews it it becomes a little of a challenge so if we want to have these regulations it has to be in one place definitions have to be in one place conditional uses have to be in one place so and that is why what you see in front of you you have four different ordinances ordinance amendments but these ordinance amendments are all related to the economic development opportunity zone so you notice that the newer definitions that were added are related to the edo but at the same time um, i want to be able to make this ldo more flexible when it comes to uses so we define uses they i'll give you an example light industrial use that that name has been that that use has been used so many times in the ldo but there is no definition for it how do we decide what's light industrial on i mean we need to have a definition to be able to evaluate uh, retail sale and services uh, i'll give you an example so the ordinance is so specific that you can sell ice cream but you can't sell cookies so if i'm selling ice creams i'm a permitted use but if i'm selling cookies i'm not a permitted use and we are challenged every now and then that why am i not permitted like pet stores um mr mamakis and i have discussed this so many times a pet store is allowed but grooming is not allowed a kenneling is allowed daycares or animal daycares are allowed but you can't groom the pets so then it becomes challenge it becomes very challenging for businesses and they often come and say okay why are you being difficult but it's not really we who are being difficult it's the ordinance the way it, the ordinance is written so this is a long exercise it's it, like we'll have to go from zone to zone make changes to the ldo this is the first attempt um so next line i'll give you some snapshots of uh, the edo1 zone and explain what i'm talking about if you uh, notice on the screen this is the section of edo1 zone uh, along route 34 and morris town road what you notice is the buildings are set back they are arranged perpendicular to these lots like marketplace uh, the shopping center the building goes right to the back but this is a zone where we want pedestrian activity we want more businesses we want it to be more business friendly if the retail store is aligned such that you are facing a sea of parking spaces then it's not inviting when you look at the corner of route 34 and morris town road that's a triangular lot and i think i am not sure what really uh, we can do to change it but ideally to have the building fronting on route 34 with parking at the back would have been an ideal situation but at the same time you see a lot of flex storage mini storage warehouse kind of setup there are a lot of auto related uses i'll talk about it in a minute next slide this is the section between cotrell road and amboy road uh, and this is the part of edo1 where the buildings again have parking areas right in the front most of them are occupied by auto related uses next slide this is the entire edo1 zone along route 34 what you see shaded in light green yellow is all auto related uses and I mean over a period that was not really the vision for EDO1 but over a period most of these auto related uses have taken up I have uh, heard the chairwoman tell me many a times that you know what can we do about this why why is everybody parking cars I have also noticed that uh, one of the car dealerships uh, on route 9 I 
don't remember which one but they park their vehicle to advertise right on the landscape area as if the car is going to jut out into the right of way so i mean there has to be ways to uh, restrict or uh, limit the way the area looks so next slide so the amendments to uh, the definitions. What we did is, as an exercise, the zoning officer, Lauren and myself, along with Nicole, we sat down and we tried to see what type of uses, in fact, we asked input from Mr. Mamakis as well, uh, to see what type of uses have come up to us and what, which are the ones we have really denied. We st uh, started researching on other ordinances, uh, how other towns deal with these type of uses, and now we create definitions so next line the ones that are highlighted uh, we we are eliminating commercial street which is a definition in the current EDO uh, ordinance but we are really not using that term anymore that's why that's been eliminated convenience store comes from the EDO zone ordinance um, mini mart also comes right from the existing ordinance what you see in brown is the newer definitions we define heavy industrial we define light industrial we define pad sites personal services like salon barber shops we define recreational facilities next page retail convenience with fueling service this must be a new term uh, but uh, Users like Vava have actually the convenience store is more like a primary use there and the fueling service becomes a secondary use. So that's the term used for um, uh, Vavas. But if it is a smaller convenience store with gas station like a quick check or 7-Eleven, they come under gas station with convenience store. So we define that. We have retail sale and services. Now, if you're selling anything or if you're providing service, it comes under that. What that does is you're not trying to differentiate between somebody selling cookies and somebody selling an ice cream. You're selling something, so you, are, you come under that category. If you're providing a service, you come under that category. Wellness center and spa, this was one of the uses that Mr. Mamakis had reached out to me and I was like, I think it, it deals with mind and body, but I was wrong when I started researching. Some of these wellness centers and spa have uh, methadone clinics, clinics attached to it. They have rehab centers and we wanted to have a clearer definition. We didn't want because our ordinance does not allow those uses. So we wanted to be clearer so that when somebody comes in, we say, okay, you fall under wellness center and spa, but you cannot have a methadone clinic in there or you can't have a rehab center. So we define that. Wholesale trade is another definition we added. And these go to the section 250-6 of the uh, LDO. Amendments to the prohibited uses. So with this one, uh, what we did is we actually went through our schedule of permitted uses. And the uses that are highlighted or the ones that are in um, brown or, or yellow are the ones that are not permitted in any zone. The schedule says they're not permitted in any zone, but our prohibited use section does not list them. So it's inconsistent. We wanted this to be very consistent. Like for example, adult entertainment is not permitted in um, Old Bridge, but it's not listed under prohibited uses. So we listed that. Um, room board houses, mobile home parks, um, flea markets, uh, secondhand auto parts, junkyards, escort services, tattooing and body piercing, uh, massage parlors, auction services. These are all I haven't created them. They are in the schedule of permitted uses, and it shows that it's not permitted in any of the zones. But yet, it was never listed in the prohibited use section. So we went through all the uses to see what's not permitted in any of the zone. We added it to the list. Um, heavy industrial use is something we defined, and there were two, um, uh, two uses on there related to chemicals and oil, which fall under heavy industrial use. So we replaced those two uses with heavy industrial. We have a definition for that now. Next page. 
the um, EDO1 zone. Uh, like I said before, EDO1 and EDO3 both had the same purpose based on our existing ordinance. So now we defined it. Um, originally, uh, it was uh, it it was tailor made for more highway commercial type of setup. But EDO1 zone is on Route 34 and English Town Road. Uh, I believe it's more neighborhood commercial. So we recrafted uh, the purpose. Next page. Here's a list of permitted uses, uses that have been defined by uh, Section 250-6, amended, I mean, retail sale and services, retail food establishments, bank and financial institutions, studio of teacher of art, music, dance, art galleries, professional photography studio, health and fitness center, business offices, medical offices, professional offices, personal services, public and private parking areas, Restaurants. Restaurants we classify as quality restaurants, uh, um, limited service restaurants, fast food restaurants, cafes, taverns, uh, daycare facilities, child care uh, facilities and adult daycares, animal daycare including kennel service, hospitals and clinics, educational services. This is one of the uses where the zoning officer and uh, Mr. Mamakis has reached out to me before that uh, one of our ordinances says that you can't have educational services on the ground floor. You need to have it on the second floor. I think it's the TCD. But that triggered a thought that, you know, these are more like coupons and math genie type of setups, and they should be permitted in uh, such a setup. But what we did is educational service is a broad term. We need to define it because a junior college is also an educational service. So what we do in this is if the use is limit is up to 10,000 square feet, then it is permitted in the EDO1 zone and in the EDO3 zone. If the use is beyond 10,000 square feet, then it is only permitted in the EDO3 zone as a conditional use. And the reason being, we have to constantly remember, EDO1 zone is uh, has minimum lot size as one acre, whereas EDO3 has a minimum lot size of three acre. On a one acre parcel, based on the allowed FAR, you cannot have a building that is more than 13,000 square feet. So the maximum you could have is like 75% of it. That's, why, that's where the 10,000 came from. Then we have mini warehouses. I know there are existing mini warehouse, flex warehouse kind of uses on Route 34. We limited the size to 15,000 square feet. So anything beyond that is permitted in the EDO3 zone because it's a larger uh, square footage. Next page. Conditional uses. So the ordinance, the current uh, conditional use section of the EDO, uh, allowed gas stations with convenience stores and mini marts, but the standards were crafted only for the convenience store. So if it's a mini mart, it depends on how the person interprets. I would interpret that convenience store, mini marts don't have standards, so they're not permitted because there's a court case which says that if a conditional use does not have conditions listed, then it's a use variance. It's a use that is not permitted. So I could interpret it that way. We wanted to make it clearer. So now we allow mini marts or convenience store, they each one has their own minimum lot size requirement. So mini marts as per definition is anything that is less than 2,000 square feet and could be on a one acre parcel. But if it's a convenience store, it is more than 2,000 square feet and less than 5,000 square feet, but that can be only on a three acre parcel. You can't have it on a one acre parcel because the lot is smaller. Then we have retail convenience with fueling service. Like I said, VAVAs fall under that category. We have standards for that. drive through facilities. Like I mentioned before, the LDO is silent on drive through facilities. So now we allow drive through facilities related to banks, financial institutions, pharmacy, or fast food rest restaurants, provided they meet the conditions of the conditional use. And Lauren will get into the conditions later. Um, the that's okay that's okay 
the bulk standards. So one thing I noticed is our ordinance has front yard requirements. But if the front yard requirement is 50 feet, a designer could put a building at 50 feet, he could put a building at 100 feet, and he could put a building at 125 feet. What happens with that is you create parking in the front yard. And that's something which you don't want. You want buildings to be closer. You want it to be more pedestrian friendly, especially in the EDO one. So what we did is we came up with a minimum and a maximum requirement so that any vacant parcel that comes in with new designs, the buildings have to be closer. It cannot be beyond that 50 feet. So that's the only thing we changed in the bulk requirements. We haven't changed the minimum FAR, uh, the maximum FAR. We haven't changed the uh, landscape area ratio. Everything else remains same except for the uh, setback requirements. Next page. This is the design standards. We added outdoor storage and trash enclosure. We added requirements that they have to be screened with a fence or landscape area. Um, we, the other thing I notice is in the f nine months I have been here, every application that comes to the planning board asks for a buffer variance. And the reason being is if a parcel in an EDO one zone is gonna be one acre because that's the minimum lot size requirement. And if the ordinance requires a 50 foot buffer, most of the property is gone within the 50 foot buffer because a parcel is only one acre. There's very limited room for anybody to put a building in there. So the, the buffer requirement really doesn't work along the frontage. But here instead we added landscape requirement. We added requirements that if it's next to a residential use, there has to be a certain buffer. So we tweak the buffer requirement a little bit. Um, with lighting and street furniture, we made it more, uh, uh, in, it is more in sync with the EDO, existing EDO standards than the TCD. It does not directly reflect the TCD standards. Next page. The sidewalk requirement, we really didn't change much except for the last, uh, uh, last condition, which says that the requirements contained here in enumerate general sidewalk requirements. Sidewalk and bikeways along county roads and state highways shall be held to Middlesex County and NJDOT requirements, respectively, because that's, that's where most of these properties are on Route 34, English Town Road. So they come under, uh, or the Highway 9, they come under the state or the county uh, jurisdiction. Next page. EDO3, the purpose remains unchanged. Next page. Here again, we have the permitted uses section. And um, like I said before, anything like educational service beyond 10,000 square feet becomes a conditional use. Many warehouses beyond 15,000 square feet is permitted in the EDO3 zone. So the uses that are permitted are more to do with the size of the lots. Um, junior colleges are permitted as a conditional use. Um, we have other type of warehousing. Again, the same thing I noticed. Um, an amusement park is not permitted based on the current ordinance, an amusement park is not permitted, but an office related to an amusement uh, park can be allowed in an EDO3 zone. So uh, there, I, I didn't really quite understand the logic. Uh, Mr. Mamakis and I have been discussing this all the time. Like you can allow the office, but you can't really have the use. You can't have a banquet facility on Route 9, which is uh, something questionable. So that those are the things. So basically, these uses have been added after having a lot of discussions with other officials. A lot of research has gone through it. We actually sat down with the existing ETO zone ordinance, and we would read out the use and make sure that it falls under one of these definitions so that we don't miss anything. So... Um, you have uh, a numerous numerous services that are uh, allowed now in this EDO3 zone, like printing, duplicating. Um, there is amusement parks, daycares, animal daycares, uh, catering facilities, banquet facilities, hotels, uh, warehousing, wholesale trade. Um, 
this again the same uses that are also permitted in the edo one zone and here you have taverns and micro breweries too next page conditional uses now uh, retail convenience with fueling service was added. Uh, like I mentioned before, there were no standards for mini marts, so I, we added mini marts to it. Drive through facilities related to banks, financial institutions, pharmacies, or fast food restaurants was added just like EDO. What, what is new in this uh, zone is banks and restaurants on pad sites with or without drive throughs So what we did is based on our GIS data, we analyzed parcels in the EDO3 zone to see if there are deeper lots or larger lots that can accommodate a, a pad site in front. What pad site does is it does not have direct access from Route 9 or Route 18. It would have internal access uh, within from a shopping center. I know that in the past the board has approved uh, two path sites on the Walmart site on 18. So this will be identical to that. There would be pad sites on. There are a few parcels that really qualify for the pad sites, but we wanted to cover that and we added that as a conditional use. Everything else remains the same. We did tweak uh, certain standards like car dealers, uh, dealerships, and um, for um, automotive repair and maintenance, we added standards so that there is screening, there's fencing, and I would let Lauren speak on that next. The bulk standards, again, we added a minimum and a maximum uh, front yard setback requirement. The FAR, the LAR, everything else remains the same. Next page. The design standards, again, we added standards for outdoor storage, uh, trash enclosures, buffers. This remains quite unchanged because these uh, EDO3 zone is along Route 9 and 18, so here you can expect to have more uh, buffer areas. The sidewalk, again, we added the requirement that it has to meet the county and the state requirements. Next slide. Uh, now we'll get into the conditions of the conditional use, and I'll hand over to Lauren, and she'll uh, go through the slides. All right. So to kind of summarize what we did, oh, sorry. To summarize what we did, we removed the inconsistencies. We also notice that uh, the conditional uses are not, they are in um, the EDO section, but not in the conditional use section. So we did include that uh, all together to make it more user friendly. And then we also added some new conditional uses, such as the drive-through drive facilities for banks, retail, uh, for, I'm sorry, banks, pharmacies, and also fast food. And then also retail convenience with fueling services and um, pad sites with or without drive through facilities as well. We also simplified and rearranged the existing conditions, and then we also added a few new requirements for the automotive-related uses. Kind of skip that one. So one of the first things we noticed was that the term retail sales and services was, uh, was actually used in the CC and CR zone, but it hadn't been defined. So we now added a definition to eliminate those inconsistencies. And we also recommended to remove this section because the requirements are covered in other areas of the process. So the traffic impact statement is covered in the completeness um, checklist. The impervious surface requirement is covered by our FAR and buffer requirements. And then lastly, the parking in the, in the front will be addressed in the site plan review process. So, moving forward, oops. So with the drive-through re facilities related to banks, pharmacies, and fast food restaurants in both EDO1 and EDO3 zones, we added, it had never been addressed. It was completely silent on drive-through facilities. So we noted that, you know, for a drive-through facility, you're gonna need some different requirements. You need more space for queuing, you need, um, We'll also need the bailout lanes, and also we kind of we wanted to prevent the windows in the front because that would actually require a drive-through 
um, in the front of the building, and that wouldn't really stick with the characteristics of what we're going for in the EDO1 zone, which is closer to a neighborhood commercial TCD kind of feel, more pedestrian friendly. When it comes to the uh, retail gasoline with mini marts or convenience stores in the EDO1 and EDO3 zones, we now differentiate. We have a, a clear definition for a mini mart, which is anything other, other, under 2,000 square feet. A convenience store is anything between 2,000 and 5,000 square feet. And then retail convenience with fueling services, we've kind of noticed is a whole different animal on its own. And it's the larger ones like Quick, uh, Quick Check, yes, and Wawa should be regulated differently. Just Wawa. Okay. Just Quick Wawa. Check is smaller. Quick Check is smaller. Wawa is the main example we were kind of discussing with this. So we now added a few requirements. We've got a lot size, yard, parking, and buffer requirements. And with, with Wawa in particular, we made a lot size requirement of three acres. And that is, kind of goes along with how Wawa's primary use is retail. The, ga the fueling is actually accessory to the use. So we are now recognizing that as separate from the mini marts and regular con uh, convenience stores. And with the banks and restaurants on pad sites, either with or without drive-throughs in EDO3, we have looked at Route 9 and Route 18 to kind of visually assess what, uh, what lots have potential for a pad site. And we found that there are not many, but we did make our requirements in such a way that would encourage the pad sites. Um, so that's our area and parking requirements that we've changed. And the next section is, uh, deals with the new car dealer, well, dealerships in general. We've noticed that there uh, seems to be a concentration of car dealerships. So we've added the lot and building size requirements in order to discourage the smaller, uh, more smaller dealerships from popping up. And we've based this, existing, based this on the existing lot sizes of what we have and we found 4.5 acres will be enough to prevent any more from coming in. And also, as Vina had mentioned earlier, we want to, moving forward, we want to prevent cars from being advertised in our landscape buffering. And when it comes to the educational services permitted in the EDO3 zone, we also made a differentiation now between uh, the, we made a lot size requirement based on a three acre FAR. And so now the ordinance reads as such, anything over 10,000 square feet is now a conditional and anything over 45,000 square feet now has a five acre minimum lot size. And when it comes to the accommodation or food services, we don't have, uh, for hotels, we now have a lot size requirement of three acres. We retained this from the EDO3, and now we've removed it from the EDO1. So we've got a minimum lot size of three acres. We've also put height and yard requirements, as well as buffer and parking. And lastly, the automotive repair and maintenance in EDO1 and EDO3. As Vina mentioned earlier, we took a special look at the EDO1 zone on Route 34 and Morristown in that area. We noticed that there's a proliferation of a lot of auto-related uses in that area. And so now we are adding a lot size requirement, the location. Uh, so that means basically a buffer now. You can't have too many uh, within 1,000 feet of any other uh, similar use. And also there are fencing requirements as well. And we focused on this area in order to address that and make sure that we don't allow more automotive related uses uh, in this area where they're already is, they're so prevalent. And the last one is the religious organizations and we actually did not make <coughs> any changes to this one, no, so. And that is it, Vina will cover anything that I may have missed. Well, I think you did a great job. Uh, the only thing I want, the only
thing I wanted to mention is hotels originally based on the existing ordinance it is allowed as a conditional use in both EDO1 and EDO3 zone but uh, EDO1 zone is one acre parcels I wouldn't imagine a hotel going on a one acre parcel on English Town Road or Route 34 so we eliminated that from the EDO1 zone but that's pretty much it. So you have four ordinances, uh, the definition section 250-6, conditional uses 250-41, prohibited uses 250-42, and then the EDO 250-38.1. As a next step, we will be presenting these ordinances for first reading in front of the council on February 25th. And um, we'll see how that goes. Okay, I just wanted to say, and then I'll open it up if anybody has any questions. Or, but I think that um, Vina and her assistant have done a really great job. And I think one of the things that is really that they really rode the the, the roads and looked at firsthand at the areas that they were studying, and also got a lot of input from Steve and um, the zoning officer. So they weren't just doing this, you know, sort of, you know, without any kind of references. So I think it's much more relevant and takes into account a lot of the, the problems that have existed and grown over the years and try to address them for future development or when some of these other things disappear and are replaced. So I really um, applaud the work that you've done, thank you. and uh, thank you. And is anyone from the uh, board? Yes, yeah, Steve. So um, I've, a lot of time and effort went into this, and a lot of departments gave their uh, key information, and you guys have done a great job. Um, one statement that you said earlier, it provides greater flexibility for us in the township to accept new type of businesses. Um, in in a lot of the changes that have made does not exclude businesses, but then it becomes a use variance. And if they want to pursue that, they can come in front of us for a use variance and go down that path. But this basically, it's a key part of the continued economic growth in the township. It really feeds into it. It defines out it all. It defines it all out in a manner in which it's understandable because we've had our challenges going. Why can't we have this? But that should be there. So uh, again, thank you to all the departments, zoning, engineering, uh, yourselves. Uh, Mayor Cannon was involved with that. The conversations that we had brought this about, and I think um, we're on the right track. Thank, thank you. you. OK. Anybody have any comments or questions? Yes. Hi. Um, I wanted to thank you. I think it's really good when we're looking at things that aren't working and, and making an effort to make them better, so thank you. Um, in light of that, my question is such a small point, but one that did stick out to me. I was curious about the uh, animal daycare um, component of it. I was wondering if the outdoor kenneling and play areas was a result of noise concern. Um, quite honestly, I'm trying to picture dropping my dog off at a place where he can't go to the bathroom. <laughs> So, um, in our town, we don't have any outdoor play areas. But in the past, in the other towns I have worked in, uh, there have been business owners that have asked us to have an outdoor play area. Well, the outdoor play area, it's not that we don't want it to be there, but the reason that it is not permitted is because it needs site plan review. It more it Because there's noise component, there is impacts to the neighborhood. So we need to review that carefully before we approve an outdoor play area. So far, we haven't received a request for outdoor play area. It has always been kenneling, grooming, but it's never been there. But that doesn't mean that somebody wouldn't approach us for that. And if it is permitted, then it's very difficult to regulate, especially if you're around residential uses. So when it's a when they know it's a use variance, the, there is a thought given to it. And then we as reviewers can review that aspect of the use. 
because I think there has to be some sort of screening, some sort of buffer between the between this type of use and residential uses. So that was the whole purpose to, of uh, not allowing it. That makes sense. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Or? Okay. Do we? Um, so, so, for, so procedurally, you got the sneak peek at this. It's not going to council until um, next week. And, and then council, if they do approve it on first reading, sends it back to the planning board. And then we need to make a determination based on your opinion whether or not it's consistent with the master plan. Oh. Um, so the board, the board doesn't actually, I mean, we can say, oh, and we like it and we think you should adopt it. But the board's real job is just to make sure that it's consistent with the master plan. As you started out your presentation, this was done based on the request of the master plan to look at these zones again. Um, so I have a feeling your report that next meeting will say it's consistent. Um, so that's really the board's role will be to pass a resolution at the next meeting if council has sent it back to us um, to, to let it continue to go forward to second reading. Um, but certainly we're here, you know, all the materials, and there's a lot, so I'm glad you came in early so we have a chance to really look through it. It's not something you want to see the same day you're voting on the resolution. <laughs> so we really do appreciate you came in to do that. And I think if anybody has questions, you can ask me, you can ask Vina um, as you go through it. Um, sure. Yeah, if anything great. comes up, you know, feel free to, to call. Um, but I do think it's, um, <clears throat> you know, it's much more user-friendly also because I think for the applicant or the potential developer writing for Steve, you can look and see, you know, you don't have to page through all different sections and you, it's just a, <clears throat> a lot more organized. And anyway, I think the approach is a really good one. And as you work your way through town, <laughs> um, I think it could only be beneficial. And, <clears throat> you know, I know a lot of people on this board, plus myself, have lived here for a number of years and things have, you know, just proliferated, like 30, Route 34, which drives me nuts. Um, so, you know, if we can get it better organized and, you know, as things go away and other things come, that they're done with a, in a more orderly fashion and, and still being friendly, but, you know. Okay, so if there's no other questions or comments, we want to thank you again for the presentation. Thank you, thank and, you for uh, having me. For all your good work. Okay. So um, going on with the agenda, the extension, there's a request for extension of time 39-17P, the Oaks development for the school site. Uh, yes, the board granted um, sub minor subdivision for this property to separate out the parcel that's going to be dedicated for a school site. Uh, but they haven't perfected it yet. I think there were some issues, environmental issues that need to dig get nailed down before they were able to file the, the paperwork to perfect it. So what this does is give them an extra, and then we're giving them nine months, the maximum the statute lets us do, so they can get that paperwork filed. Otherwise, they need to come in for another application, do exactly the same thing that we let them do. Okay. So this, this saves so them and us time. So there's a resolution in the packet just to extend that time to um, allow them to perfect the subdivision that was granted. <clears throat> Uh, it's the paperwork's in, in the, so we just vote on it. Actually, I think it's under, is it listed under resolutions to vote on? Oh, is it? On so we can vote on it when we get there. Oh, okay. Okay, then we have the minutes for January 8th of 2019. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. Okay, moved by Mr. Marucci. Is there a second? Second. Second to Mr. Schmitz. Yes. Roll call. Yes. 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 And then we have resolutions, and we can do these all in one group for attorney, chairperson, vice chairperson, secretary, vice secretary, consultant engineers, consultant traffic engineers, consultant planners, and arbors. The board voted to approve all those appointments last meeting. This is just the paperwork now that gets signed, so we have a record of it. So that's what you're voting on. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll move it. I'll second it. Okay. Yes. 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 And then we have some individual ones. 14-18P, uh, Sign Brothers LLC, Preliminary and Final Site Plan with C variances. I'll move it. I'll second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lennon? Yes. Mr.
Yes. 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 Mr. Schmitz? Yes. Mr. Money? Yes. Mr. Pink? Yes. Mr. Lucan? Yes. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Chairman Cannon? Yes. 40-18P, uh, Old Bridge Entertainment, preliminary and final site plan with C variances. Motion? I'll second. A roll call, please. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lomakis? Yes. 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 39-17P, the Oaks Development School Site Extension of Time. Motion. I'll move. Mr. Mabucci, second. second. Mr. Schmidt, roll call. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes, and then we do this one also with the deficiencies, escrow deficiency. Yes, and that can be done all together. Okay, and yeah. we'll do that as a group. The escrow deficiency resolution for American Plaza, 2500, Fellow Pater Group, Trinity Bagel, 200, HMH Hospital, Barrett and Bay, 10,000, and Allersap Holdings, 1,500. Is there a motion? I'll move it. Moved by Mr. Who? I'll second. And second by Mr. Rotti. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Lamarcus? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lenny? Yes. Mr. Payne? Yes. Now maybe I have the old. Just announce it in Yes. No. Okay, and then we have a continuance, request for a continuance, 45-18 PA Amboy Bank Administration Building, amended preliminary and final site plan, and uh, they are requesting to be continued to March 5th, 2019 without further notice. So do we have a motion to grant that? I move it. Sure. Yep, okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Lauer? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Okay, any other comments or business or questions? If not, we'll take a motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all.